Hey everyone, uh, SG Maniac here. I'm back to do another production breakdown of one of the songs that I've worked on. Uh, excited to be doing this video. Uh, get to dive into a little bit more of my catalog. Uh, apologize up front. Got a few noisy neighbors in the next door studios today, so to hear them in the background, um, that's what's going on. Um, today, I thought I would uh, walk through a remix that I did for one of my friends, Count Draco, who, if you don't know him, really talented artist. Um, definitely check out Count Draco uh, on streaming services. You'll really be a big fan of his music. Um, but this is a remix that I did for him. Um, uh, so for those of you who haven't heard it, let's go ahead and check it out. It's called Pheromones. That's about the basis of the track right there. Um, not much else comes in. It's really simple track. Um, I know there's 25 tracks, but there's really only like several different elements. So let's break that down real quick. What's going into this remix? So first things first um, are the vocals, of course. So these are Draco's vocals. <laughs> So when he sent me these, I had actually, uh, the original song is not out, it's, it's still not out, uh, and so I'd actually never heard the original, and he sent this to me without um, the original instrumental, so I really didn't know what the, instru the original sounded like, I really didn't care. Um, my goal was just to provide uh, an instrumental backing track that was you know, worthy of like these really fluid, beautiful vocals uh, and these layers. So love, you say stay, but I say go, cause I'm haunted, I don't want to get too close. So, uh, yeah, I really started just with these vocals. Um, and so, the first thing I think I did when I was making this track uh, was try to get them to sound sort of glowing and lo-fi. So if we listen to the raw vocals. Obviously a very different sound, um, but this is where, you know, my, my vocal chain comes in here that I built for this song. So first started with a little bit of vocal EQ. They're already pretty warm vocals, but this just warms them up and takes away any um, any muddy lows that might be clogging up the mix. Just a little bit brighter. Uh, really great plug-in here, uh, Echo Boy. So just, I think this is the default setting, just a nice sort of um, 
lo-fi echo. Cause I'm haunted, I don't wanna get too close. Seeing this pain of walk this road. And that's a pretty vibey echo. That's actually pretty heavy. Like you won't be hearing that on most pop songs and pop productions, but because the beat is so vibey. Notice how it fills up the beat really nice. Next thing I added is uh, some compression here. It's just a compression vocal preset I thought sounded nice. Uh, and then actually another compressor. Uh, so these vocals are double compressed, just to give them a little bit of extra saturation. Subtle difference. So the, um, the chorus comes in with these really low vocals. Um, and so I'll go ahead and introduce the next uh, element of the song, which is, I guess, really the string pad here. Um, and this is just a, a string pad on my Juno synthesizer that I played. Um, no MIDI, it's an analog synth. So I played this throughout the rest of the song. Um, and I just slowly, if you take a look at the waveform, adjusted the cutoff throughout the song so that I was opening the filter. Um, and it really brought out some nice moments in the song. I, I really only used two chords throughout the whole song, so let's listen. Sounds kind of like spa music or something, you know? Like someone's going to play a harp. But you can hear there, there are some moments where I'm, I'm playing around with a filter. And it's, it's only one instrument, but it's adding so much excitement and, you know, so much uh, movement behind the, behind the drums and behind the bass. Um, so how did I treat this synthesizer? So if we take everything off, raw sound, nothing special. First, little brightener. I've been learning to always just kill the lows that we don't need because especially in like the 20 to 50 hertz range, those lows are going to be eating up your mix. Um, they're going to be hitting the limiter just be because of uh, the nature of low notes um, because they have compounding frequencies. Um, so a low bass note will actually have lots of higher harmonics in it um, and that's going to be eating up your mix so usually if you don't need those lows in the mix like in this case this pad sounds fine without it right so I'm sort of dampening those lower sounds in order to make room for the kick drum and the bass but also a little bit of a high shelf because I want it to be a brighter synthesizer micro shift great plugin so let's hear that you're going to hear a bit of a chorus and a bit of a stereo spread Now this is a great, I've been finding a lot of usefulness in this plugin. Just a little bit of, this is like a, you could throw this plugin on anything and it'll sound great. Just a little bit of saturation distortion, small bit of pitch wobble, a little bit of vinyl noise, and that's, you can hear that nice reverb there. Um, and then this magnetic one, I, I think this is like dropout, it's supposed to simulate a vinyl record. Um, and then I have a side chain compression, which is really obvious when you don't have the kick audio. And last but not least, uh, some plate verb. So nothing, I mean, just a, your average synth pad. But I think what's really special about this pad is the fact that I took the time to play it all the way through the song. Uh, just one take, mistakes and all. And I think that that is something that's underdone, and, and especially in dance music these days, you're so tempted to use loops, you're tempted to use MIDI, especially if you're not a keyboard player. But you don't need 
to do fancy things. I literally just found two chords and played them the whole time. Here's the end of the song. So you can already hear, like, you don't even, you don't even have to know how the song goes, but the, me opening up the filter is adding so much excitement. And then... I'll bring everything in. Right there, I'm literally just holding one note. And then I'm gonna play with the filter again. Hear how effective that is? So, I think it's definitely something that gets lost in a bit of modern dance music um, for, for a lot of different genres. Um, just playing things all the way through and you know, embracing the good with the bad, but bringing out those human elements can really make a track more exciting. Um, so, the drums. Just clean and crisp. I love these drums. Um, we can break it down element by element. So here's the snare. Nothing special. 909 sample. Open hat on the offbeats, classic dance music. Clap, goes nicely with the snare. Notice I have little ghost notes on each of those, so there's the snare that has this ghost note. One, two, three, down. And then the clap has, at the end, the clap has extra pattern. So just adding in those little bits of juice, like going the extra mile to make your drum parts interesting, pays off. So let's add in the kick. Uh, 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 uh. Just kind of like a nice, not quite like Jersey Club or, but just a nice offbeat, cool kick drum pattern. And then I think what glues it all together are these 808 hats. So cool beat, I think. Um, let me see. My eyes are so on top of this, I love this filter freak. Um, it's it's called a little fatter. It's like a I don't know. Don't ask me how it works, but it just makes your drums sound a little fatter. Um, so without any of these plugins, just a little little plain. The parts are there, but it definitely needs a bit of saturation. Uh, it needs to be fat. And so let's start with this. It kind of, I think this plugin, you can look at this filter curve here in the middle of the screen. It kind of brightens the highs a little bit. I also think it just makes the lows hit a bit more. Here's a drum shaper, adding a little bit more mojo, moho. And then last but not least, Oxford Inflator, which is the most mysterious plugin I own. Again, don't ask me what it's doing. But I like to, I, for me, Compressor saturation sometimes used lightly. Like here, I only have the effect at like 1.5. It's just another way to sort of glue sounds together. If you're running them all through the same compressor a little bit lightly, um, like I pulled each of these samples out of a different folder um, on my hard drive. You know, they're not all from the same place. So just played together playing, they might sound a little wacky, a little confusing, uh, a little disjointed. So the more that you can do to make your, especially your drums, if you're using samples, to make them sound cohesive, unless you're like getting them all from the same drum machine, um, the more you can do to achieve that, the better results you're going to get, I think. Um, so yeah, let's listen to those drums in the mix. I just think they sound cool. So we've basically almost gone through everything. Uh, one last little keyboard element here, uh, this organ stab. So it's this song's really minimal. We basically have vocals, one string pad. Um, I wanted like one more sort of rhythmic element, um, but let's take a listen to this, uh, just soloed. So it's pretty like old school house vi organ vibes. So in the mix. You say you stay. You almost don't, you almost don't even notice it, um, but let's listen. So they just happen throughout the song. 
Um, and let's see how I got that sound. So if we listen to this. Let's start with no plugins. Sounds like an organ. Uh, this is actually also from my Juno synth. It's, I have an Alpha Juno 2 uh, in the back of my studio. So starting off again with this RC20. There's the reverb right there, and then a little bit of distortion. Without, with. So I think um, another thing uh, for more junior producers watching this, another thing that I think you can really learn from this song, or that I can, I can relearn from myself, uh, if I can say that, is that like you can really make or break a song with just a cool mix. I'm not gonna go out on a limb and say that this is like a polished or really great mix. I make, I'm not very good at mixing things myself, but like no one's gonna tell me that the vibes aren't like this, the ambiance isn't like there for this song. Um, like it's just a cool underground so vibe. And part of that comes from the different reverbs I'm using. That's just building out that space um, for the song. And it comes through from experimentation. Here's another thing that I added. So the next layer is an echo. Let's listen again. So without, with, just adding a nice little like call and response echo. Uh, some EQ. So here I boosted the highs, again cut the lows. I just do that on like everything in my mixes that which can't be right, but um, you're not you're not watching this because I know how to mix, so uh, that's my disclaimer. <laughs> Here's another micro shift. Just spreads in the also uh, not only using reverb to create space, but where you're panning, where are you panning your elements in the song? Are they shifted out to the side? Um, are they dead center? Uh, are they somewhere in between? Are they moving throughout the song? Are you automating the panning of like a hi-hat? Um, I think stuff like that is really important. In fact, if we look at this hi-hat, I sort of glossed over this, but this is this is a nice little moment. Um, you know, this is a technique I've been wor working on, not perfecting, but so, so first thing we notice, um, boost of the highs and a little extra gain just because I think the sample is pretty quiet. So that's needed. Now look at this, pan man. So it's very subtle, but this represents the panning of the hi-hat. And you can sort of hear it shift across the stereo spectrum there, just back and forth, creating a little bit of movement um, in the background for the listener. Um, because it's going throughout most of the song, like there's only a few spaces where it's not actually playing. So it's keeping things interesting. It's adding to the ear candy. And then last but not least, I love a phaser on an electronic hi-hat. Without, pretty straight. Now listen to like the chewiness come in with this phaser. It's just like something's a little funky and I love that. Um, just adds to the ear candy again. So uh, yeah, we have that organ stab. Uh, last but not least, we got the bass. Let's find it. Where is it? I love this bass part. So guess what? Also played entirely through no loops on my Alpha Juno. Um, which uh, for a bass part I'll give you is a little unusual because you want more precision. Um, I just didn't care. <laughs> I just had, f it's all about having fun, right? So that's what I was doing. Um, but yeah, it's kind of like almost like a samba pattern. So if I kill the plugins, this is what we have. You notice that it's also kind of clicky on the release of some of these, uh, which isn't great. I think if like, I was working with another person on this track, that probably would have been something that I would have tried to address, but so here, I'm actually, I'm keeping most of these, um, 
the lows, but I decided that I wanted the kick drum, even though it's a lighter kick drum, to provide most of the sub. And usually one of the things you have to worry about in your mixes are the kick and the bass fighting too much. Uh, so I dropped out some of the lows, um, and then I scooped some of the highs as well. So let's listen with that, with and without. So that deals with a little bit of the clickiness, um, and I think it helps with the mix fighting the kick drum. Uh, added some compression, let's listen. Just a little louder, a little more saturation. Then this decapitator, which is probably doing the most. You can really hear that the sound starts to change, it gets a little grittier. takes up a little more space um, and that's a song I mean like I said simple song I think you know it's not like gonna change the world or whatever but I had fun making this song I think some of the really nice moments in the song again come back to me experimenting through musicality and playing out you know each of the synth parts by hand and not using any MIDI loops um, and also the arrangement, I think it's really nice. If we list, there's some really nice moments where you can see that things are shifting in and out, like the string pad drops in and out, um, the bass comes in and out, the drums actually drop out, the organ pad is very minimal, and it's all to highlight like Draco's vocals. I really want to just take one last second to talk about uh, what's going on here with this drum dropout. <laughs> No synth, no synth pad. Here go the drums. I think this goes back to the message I really wanted to drive home with this production breakdown is that yeah it's a simple song I have vocals string pad bass drums organ stab I mean that's five elements you know I know that there are multiple vocal tracks and drums but all in all like I'm treating this like I'm cooking something and I'm using five ingredients and um, you can do so much just by like simple arrangement you know like pulling something out at the right time can be so effective putting something back in at the right time having the patience to wait you know all of these things are such effective they're so much more effective than like learning to EQ something like to the 99th percentile of perfection you know just simple arrangement uh, skills will get you further than anything um, in my opinion because once you know how to arrange music and like arrange a certain song you start to view everything as like oh you're a painter and you know you you have a palette of different colors you're gonna paint a painting you know you're gonna use all of the colors you're gonna use some more in this corner uh, some more in the middle um, and each each one of these you know instruments each one of these tracks each one of these ingredients is a different you know life force throughout the song and you have to treat it give each one the respect it reserves make space for some of them at some time there's a moment here where i basically just have drums and bass going or it's that's how it feels because i drop out the synth pad let's listen again And then once the synth pad comes back in, it's so much more effective. 
no drums, no bass. They both cut out at the same time. So like these types of things, you can always listen. When you're listening to your favorite music, start to say, you know, when you hear the arrangement change, you'll train your ears to say, oh, I love the way that they actually pulled the drums out there. I love it when the bass player stopped playing there. I loved it when the vocalist took a break there. And because you'll, what you'll notice is that there, something is taking a break and something else is now taking the time to shine in the arrangement. Uh, and that's what beautiful arranging is all about. So I'll end my diatribe. If you've watched this far, thanks so much. Um, I hope that you learned something cool. Uh, be happy to do more of these. I, I, I really love teaching people this kind of stuff. Um, yeah, I, I probably won't edit any of my videos to look like the typical YouTube content, but I much prefer a feeling like we, you and I are in the same room together and I'm just talking to you. So uh, again, thanks for watching humbly uh, and I will see you next time.